For today's project, I wanted to paint this succulent pot with dots. I'm going to be using enamel paints from Deco Art. I have two shades of pink here. So I decided to do a gradient, just going from the lighter pink to the darker. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna fill up all the pots except for one with this light pink, just putting a little bit less in each of the pots as I move my way down. And then I'm gonna take the darker pink and start at the opposite end. The only difference with the darker pink is that I will put a lot less darker pink in each pot than I did with the lighter pink. And I'm just gonna mix them up and just see where I am with the gradient. This is the gradient that I ended up with. Now that I have my paint mixed up, I need to prepare the succulent pot. So I just use an alcohol wipe to really rub it down and get any oil debris off of the pot. And I'll let that completely dry before I start placing my dots. I've done a few of these succulent pots over the years. And I have learned the easiest way to hold this thing while painting it is just to stick my hand in it. By doing that, I have good control over it. I take away that risk of smudging any dots, dropping it. It ends up working really well for me and I'm able to do a large portion of it without ever having to set it down. So I'm gonna call it a hack. Since I had already mixed up my paint and I did a gradient, I knew I was gonna do like a sacred geometry gradient pattern on this particular piece. And the biggest thing I had to decide was what size I wanted to do the dots. So I just picked a tool and went with it. I had no idea if it was going to fit, but I've learned over the years that since this is a round object and you can't see the front and the back at the same time, I learned a little trick. You just pick a tool that you want to work with and you start placing your dots. And once you get close to where the ends meet, you start to look at what your spacing is doing and you can start to adjust your spacing so that your dots will end up fitting in that space. So if you need to leave a little bit more room between your dots, you can. Once the piece is completely done, you're not going to notice because you're either looking at the side that maybe has a little bit larger space or you're looking at the side that doesn't. You're not looking at them at the same time. It's a little trick. You don't have to stress about it as much. In this particular case, I do wish I would have gone with a smaller tool because I placed the dots so close together that with this particular paint, um, some of my dots just kind of kept merging together, which was driving me insane. And I always have to fix it because I just can't, I just can't not fix it, which is why I have so much paint on my hands. And um, it's only going to get worse throughout the video. I continue to work the pattern all the way down the succulent pot. I am just changing the colors with each row. So just slowly working my way down the gradient. And with this pattern, all I'm doing is just placing a dot between the dots of the previous row. I am also able to use the exact same tool for the entire project because on this particular succulent pot, the dimensions of it are the exact same all the way through. I will place a link to this pot down below because it's a really great one to paint because of that fact that it's not constantly changing dimensions on you. So it makes it really easy to do a symmetrical design on it. And it ended up being one of my favorite succulent pots to paint just because of that fact. Now, one thing that I did not do before painting this is I did not do a swatch of the paint colors to kind of see and test out what they were going to look like once they were dry. Just kind of trusted the process and went with it. As it continued to dry, it got darker and darker and I realized it's not going to be fine. But at this point, I just kind of just kept going and kept moving forward with the project because I knew that it is easier to remove those dots once they are dry than when they are wet. So I'm just going to deal with that later if I need to. Once I got to the bottom and that darker color was dry, I knew it was a problem that I was going to have to fix it. It's going to drive me crazy. I really love that color. I love it so much. But with the gradient, I just didn't want it to be that dark. I decided I have to fix it. I could have totally left it alone. It was a personal thing for me. Plus, I knew that this part would be fun. Since these dots are dry but they're not fully cured yet. I think it's going to pluck them off with an embossing needle. Now before I remove these dots, I did go in and lighten up that darkest pink and then I placed a test dot on top of one of these darker dots. So right here you can see the dot and allowed it to dry so I can kind of see if 
I liked that color and if it was going to work well with the gradient. So I was really happy with the color. So I just moved forward with removing the rest of these dots. And then once I got all of these off, I got to go in and place all the dots back, which again was very enjoyable. It was really satisfying to kind of place these dots back in the space. This is just like this perfect little space in between these two lines of dots. They fit so perfectly in their little home. Sometimes when I have to fix mistakes or little things like this, it can be extremely frustrating and time consuming. But in this case, it was really enjoyable. I really did enjoy the entire process of creating this piece. And I hope you enjoyed watching me create it. Uh, down below, I will put down um, all the supplies I used and where I got them from. And if you have any questions, just let me know and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. Uh, thanks for watching and be sure to like, share and follow and I will see you guys soon.